Extensive reading improves every skill, even speaking. Try it. Extensive reading, or ER for short, is an approach to language learning that encourages students to read a large number of books or other reading material that's relatively easy for them to understand. Ideally, the books should be easier than their current reading level so that they can read quickly without having to look up words in a dictionary. That slide was taken from the Extensive Reading Foundation, as was this one. Here it's a, a little acronym, READ, read quickly and enjoyably with adequate comprehension so they don't need a dictionary. I think I would just add here that if students are going to read enjoyably, there must be an element of choice. They must be able to choose what it is they're going to read. So what I want to talk about today is why do extensive reading, what I learnt from running class libraries for 40 years, and a quick introduction to Oxford Reading Club, extensive reading the easy and cheap way. So there are various theories supporting extensive reading. The first one that comes to mind is Stephen Krashen. Paul Nation is another important theorist who's written about extensive reading. And Christine Nuttall wrote an excellent book in the 1980s about reading. Krashen's theory of compelling comprehensible input states that the only way to acquire language is to read or listen to language you understand because it's only at a little higher level than your own language ability. And he coined this little formula, I plus one. I is your, your level of language into language and plus one is a little bit more difficult. Paul Nation states that a well-balanced language course should consist of four equal strands. Meaning-focused input, reading or listening to compelling comprehensible input. Meaning-focused output, which means speaking or writing communicatively. And language-focused learning, which is what all language teachers have been doing um, for years and years, which is focusing on how the language works. But he also has a fourth strand, which is fluency development. Because it feels rightly that it's not enough to know the second conditional. You've got to be able to produce the second conditional fluency when, fluently when that's uh, demanded. And he says each strand should receive a roughly equal amount of time on a course. Christine Nuttall gives the most concise reason for doing extensive reading. She says, the best way to improve our knowledge of a foreign language is to go and live among its speakers. The next best way is to read extensively in it. Um, she's obviously right. It's also far cheaper to read extensively uh, in English than to go and live in uh, an English-speaking country. So, as a teacher, you've got to organise extensive reading. Apart from obtaining the books that you want your students to read, um, you've got to decide what level students should start at. This is slightly complicated if you're using books from many different publishers. Um, a second, and I think the most important thing of all, is helping students choose what to read. You want to make sure that students end up enjoying the book they're reading. So you've got to make it easier for them to successfully choose a book that they will enjoy. I think a teacher has also got to set targets of what he expects from the students and give them feedback as the course progresses about how well they're uh, reaching these targets or surpassing them. And I said the most important thing was helping students choose what to read, but I think it's vital that 
you bring the books to class every day and with paper books that that wasn't such a complicated thing um, deciding what level students should start at my, my principle is this that you should always start at a level that's sufficiently easy for everybody in the class to be able to understand and potentially enjoy what they're reading so it's better for it to be too easy for some people than for it to be too difficult for anyone so basically if it's an A2 course you want to start the level of the reading a little bit lower and if you look at the graph here um, you've got um, pre-intermediate is A2 I suggest starting at level one in the Oxford bookworms um, you'll notice that I've got four or five levels that I think students can go through over the course of a year. Not all students will get through all those levels, but the best ones certainly should be able to do that. I think the best way to make sure that students find a book that they're going to enjoy is for them to choose the book. And if you've got 2,000 books in your school library or 100 books in your class library they're not going to be able to look through the blurbs on the back of all those books but if they know what genres they find attractive in their own language they can home in on crime and detection if that's what they like reading in, in their language or, or science fiction um, so if you can provide the students with catalogues of readers for each level but subdivided by genres students can quickly home in on a book which is likely was more likely to be satisfactory for them um, here's a little questionnaire that I used with my students um, I have adapted it slightly um, but I'll I will provide you with a copy of this which you can then um, change in whatever way you like. Um, this is the sort of catalogue that I produced. Um, I didn't have any pictures, um, things were organised, uh, this was all uh, level E which um, is about the equivalent to Oxford Bookworm level 2. Um, you can see here there are adventure, uh, spy, thriller stories first of all and then right at the end there you can see the biographies of famous people true stories begin and, and there were um, I don't know, three or four pages or, or possibly more I told my students at the beginning of the courses that I taught which were pre-intermediate and intermediate that I expected them to read one book a week um, the, the, the books at those levels are, are very short reading at 100 words a minute it should be possible to finish them in quarter of an hour maximum half an hour so uh, suggesting one book a week at the beginning of the course I think is a reasonable target and, it, and it's an easy target to to understand um, saying um, 2,000 words a, a week is more complicated um, as the course progressed I sent students stickers things that said things like this 10 books this course 15 books this course 25 books this course and and that's no exaggeration not everybody read 25 books but I needed to have a sticker saying that another type of uh, feedback and way of, of motivating students was I sent this out about six students who'd already read 15 books in this course and said you know what's your target for June then 25 30 bringing the books to class every day I think is vitally important this is an example of a class library that I took it's uh, Oxford bookworms at level three so it was probably the second level that students went through in my intermediate class. Now, <coughs> Oxford
Oxford Reading Club is online, so bringing books to class every day is not going to happen, but we'll talk about that later. Um, Oxford Reading Club is like a library and it's got many different series of crazy readers and they cater for all ages and all levels from pre-A1 up to C1. Um, at pre-primary there are 127 readers but there's also three series which cover pre-primary and primary so if half of those are for pre-primary you can add in 70 more it's practically 200 readers for pre-primary students to choose from as they go through the different levels um, at primary 100 um, let's move on a primary 183 readers um, from one two three four five series um, and remember there was another 70 from the, the series which spanned pre-primary and primary so you've got 250 readers to choose from of course there are fewer than that at every individual level and for secondary and adults with the dominoes and bookworm series which are the ones I'm most familiar with, um, there's a total of 273 books to work from. Um, dominoes are perhaps more for secondary students, um, early secondary school, and for late secondary school, perhaps bookworms would be suitable. Um, the students, after all, are, are practically adults. Um, this is just giving an an indication of the prices. These are the prices in Spain. I, I can't guarantee that the prices will be the same in your country. Um, but you can get free access to a selection of the books. There are about 700 altogether. But you get free access to 80 books, which will give you a flavour of what Oxford Reading Club is. And that lasts for 14 days. You can also buy subscriptions for various um, lengths one month, six months or twelve months. And if your school adopts Oxford Reading Club, there's another way of buying tickets. Uh, the school buys the tickets and issues them to the students. So if you're using Oxford Reading Club, you've got to find where to start. But it's exactly the same as with paper books. There's really no difference there. The principle is they should read things which are too easy for some and never too difficult for anyone. Finding what to read? Well, making catalogues by genre of all the books in the series is something that I've done and I'll, I'll show you that. Setting targets and giving feedback? Well, I think setting the targets of one book a week at the beginning um, and then giving feedback you'll be helped by Oxford Reading Club, which do provide um, ways of giving feedback to students. But bringing books to class every day is the thing that you're simply not going to be doing with Oxford Reading Club. So this is pretty well the same as the chart I showed you before. The only difference is that I've added in elementary. Um, elementary is not a level that I've taught for many many years but for example with elementary I would introduce extensive reading or, or as I called it the class library uh, just before Christmas um, so that's at the end of the first term and I would start with the lowest level there these are the genres that Oxford graded readers use in the catalogues they're slightly different to the ones that I use, but they cover the same basic ideas. So if you like crime and mystery, there are plenty there. Um, fantasy and horror would include uh, science fiction. Um, thriller and adventure would be what I'd got down as adventure. Um, so I've used these genres for my catalogues of graded readers. Here's um, part of a catalogue of graded readers at level starter 
uh, Oxford bookworms. And you can see at the beginning there's uh, the four genres that are available at this level. And the idea is that students click on the genre that they like most and then they read the blurbs for the books in that genre. Um, and at, at the end of each section, at each genre, that it says back to the beginning. So if they couldn't find anything that really appealed to them, they can just click on back to the beginning and they'll go back to here and they can choose uh, through an adventure or a different, a different genre. They're designed to be used on tablets and mobile phones. The one on the left there is, is on a tablet um, and the one on the right is on a mobile phone. So it, it's one book per page so it should be quite easy for students to flip through the, the different blurbs. Now I mentioned before that Oxford Reading Club consists of a range of different series. I think there are there are more than a dozen different series here and some of the series have these five steps but all of them have step three. That's the step of reading the text silently with or without listening to it at the same time. Um, and this is the one that I've got most experience of using um, because at Dominoes and Oxford Bookworms, you only have uh, level three. Sorry, step three. So, what are you going to do about the problem of bringing the books to class every day? Well, just sort of brainstorming a few ideas about how to keep students reading if they don't see the books in class every day. Maybe reserving five minutes every day or once a week for students to talk about the books they've read. Um, I got them to post on a class WhatsApp group every time they finished a book, giving the level of the book, the genre of the book, the title, and a one-sentence comment. And I I'm sure there are many other ideas one could use in class to remind students of the importance of online reading. Um, Oxford University Press have made available to you a very generous offer of 60 days use of the complete catalogue of Oxford Reading Club um, for you, for your students and for your colleagues. I've provided you with a link to a folder on Google Drive called Extensive Reading and in it you'll find this presentation, um, you'll find a folder with genre catalogues for Oxford Dominoes and another folder for Oxford Bookworms. You can either take a photograph of this and copy the short code by hand or you can scan the QR code. And of course you can contact me um, at email or, or on Twitter. Um, I'm sharing all of this material with you so you don't need to, to write it all down. In, in the folder there are all these subfolders um, uh, and I hope they'll be useful. I've also added in well, some useful links. In the last six months I've seen four really good webinars about extensive reading. Um, the most recent one was um, a, a, a live at Zoom which the Japanese Association for Language Teaching who have a special interest group in uh, extensive reading have, have a meeting once a month um, the details are there um, you can see past presentations there um, these are three more that I saw in, in the last six months um, Radek was somebody employed by Oxford University Press and gave a very good um, introduction to it. Um, Laura Broadbent uh, 
gave a very interesting talk about uh, a reading, extensive reading, um, and uh, Jez Uden is the most recent one. Um, I don't know that his his uh, webinar is on there yet, but it should be soon. Anyway, what I'd like to do now is to try to um, show you how to use um, Oxford University Press. Now, how can I do this? I've just got to find a way. There we are. So this is what it looks like. Um, there are two books here, um, New York Cafe, which is a bookworm, and you can see it, it's only got one step, step three. Camouflage, which is a lower level, but a really excellent book for Clill or something like that, has got all five levels. But to my mind, the vital thing is step three, which is the extensive reading. Forget all the, all the exercises and things like that. J just do the reading. Um, see if we can get camouflage started. It, it looks very good. Um, you can you can listen to it. Uh, I don't think the sound is coming through for you, but anyway, you, you can listen to it, you can change the speed. Sometimes you can choose between uh, British pronunciation and American pronunciation. The illustrations are, are, are really great. Um, and so if I go back to that, it will have registered that I've looked at that page. Um, uh, they give you a report. Let's go to a monthly report. I, I haven't read anything recently, so let's go back to... I think I read something in February. Yeah. Yeah, I, I read American Crime Stories, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, really, really very good. Um, that's, that's level six. Um, so this year, at that stage, I'd only read one book, but I've got 38 badges for books where I've read all the available steps and 48 books where I've completed the step three, the, the, the reading. Um, so I think that's, that's very worthwhile, is getting that feedback. You c students can send that feedback to their teacher. It, here's the sort of stickers the badges. Um, I've got lots of badges because I've been using it for quite some time uh, and it explains how you obtain these badges. Um, it tells you how far you are from getting the next badge as well. Um, I'm not keen on the vocabulary. Um, I, I think students are better off spending that time reading rather than, than uh, studying, trying to memorise new vocabulary. Um, the study calendar, well, that, that will show you what you've been reading and every time you've connected. So this month I've only connected uh, four times. A few more the, t the month before and more than then. And I think if you go right back to here in April uh, and May, when I was uh, was busy preparing this talk the first time, you'll find that there are a lot of uh, days when I I read something. So there isn't time to show you any more about this, but let me go back to um, the, my final slide. You've got. 60 days to use this um, go back to here you've got 60 days 
that you can use it with all the books with your students why not try the 14 day free trial with just 80 books to get the feel of it when you've got the feel of it then set it up with your students and you to start your two months trial of Oxford Reading Club and I, I genuinely hope that you'll find it worthwhile and that you'll look into the possibility of, of paying to use it um, next course. Okay, well thank you very much. <laughs>